Hey everyone, this is Homeschool Arcade helping educators thrive. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the incredibly unique phylum called Echinodermata. And this phylum contains marine animals such as starfish, sea urchins, sand dollars, sea cucumbers, and sea lilies. Don't forget to click subscribe and the bell as we come out with new content. And feel free to comment on this video and let us know what you might want to learn about next. So, let's check it out. In the phylum we're talking about today, there are about 7,000 living species called echinoderms. And this phylum is called, well, echinodermata. In this video, we will talk about the diversity, the physical features, their ecology, as well as the importance to humanity. So let's start with talking a bit about the diversity of echinodermata. Now, while echinoderms are not quite the most diverse as some of the other phylums we've talked about in terms of physical size, they still have many unique shapes and forms. The smallest echinoderm is a sea cucumber with an adult length of about mm, four millimeters. And while the majority of echinoderms are small, there are a few that, go, that grow quite large. The longest echinoderm is a sea cucumber that can get well over six feet in length. Now, besides size, let's talk about some of the other physical features that echinoderms have. Now, first, they're one of the few phyla that are not bilaterally symmetrical. So, kind of like the phylum Cnidaria, they are radially symmetrical. What this means is they have a, a repeating pattern around them at some, that, that centers around some central point. Kind of like a, a bicycle wheel. There's a central point and then there's a pattern which surrounds the entire wheel. A second common feature they have is they're found in only marine environments. Third, they have spiny skin, which is in fact where the Greek based phylum name, you know, for Echinodermata, where Echinos means hedgehog and Derma means skin. Fourth and finally, they have a simple digestive and nervous system but they don't have brains or eyes. Some have the ability to regenerate. And many species are able to shed or detach a limb, often as a form of self-defense, and then they regrow it. And that's pretty handy. <laughs> now, when being threatened, sea cucumbers can even expel parts of their internal organs and parts of their tissues, and then they regrow them. And while this isn't usually the case, there are also a few species in which where a single detached arm can develop into an entirely new, complete, independent individual animal. Now that's really amazing when you think about it. Let's check out this week's FYI. FYI for your information. Some sea stars eat by pushing their stomachs out of their mouth and engulfing their prey with it. After the food is partially digested, it is pulled back into their body. Eww. Let's take some time to talk about the echinoderm ecology. Now, echinoderms, as mentioned earlier, are found only in marine saltwater environments. They can be found in nearly any depth or ocean latitude around the world. Almost all echinoderms are what is called benthic. And what benthic means is they live on the ocean floor. And their feeding habits, well, they, they vary greatly between species. They can be filter feeders, scavengers, grazers, or even active predators. Now, echinoderms play a very important role in their environments. One of the most important roles is often keeping algae populations in check. Now, echinoderms are also important to humans in several different ways. Sea cucumbers and sea urchins are popular foods in some cultures and sometimes they're even considered a delicacy. Additionally, some sea urchin species are popular subjects of embryological and developmental biology studies. So as you can see in terms of food and study, they're extremely important to humans. Now there's some major groups that exist uh, within echinoderms, and so let's talk about some of these different classes of echinoderms that are out there. First, there's Astroidea, or these are sea stars. And sea stars generally have a flattened body and anywhere from five to like 40 arms. And they have two feet which they use to move around. The second class is Ophiroidea. 
try saying that fast, or brittle stars. These creatures have five slender, whip-like arms and closely resemble starfish. The third group is Echinoidea, which is the sea urchins and the sand dollars. Now, sea urchins are generally spiny, globular animals, and sand dollars are much, are much flatter and often burrow into the sand. The fourth group is Crinoidea, or sea lilies and feather stars. Now, these unique plant-like animals are attached to the sea bottom, and they have a crown that's consisting of a, a, a cup-like center and a set of five arms, which are generally branched and feathery. And the final class is the Holothuroidea, or sea cucumbers. Sea cucumbers have an elongated body with leathery skin, and they resemble their namesake of the vegetable, the cucumber. Now, let's take a minute to see what some of these echinoderms look like. Let's check it out. So hopefully you've enjoyed learning about this unique animal phylum of Echinodermata. And join us for the next and last major phylum of Chordata. And don't forget to click subscribe and the bell to check out any new content we're going to have coming your way. So y'all have a good one.